Welcome to Tools for the Times with Wendy Cohen, where you will learn how to be spiritually secure and inspired as you prepare for the future. Wendy, I am so especially excited about this week. We're going to be talking about intimacy with God, and you said in our last episode that it requires people to let go of control. This could be a very long show for me to be able to understand how to let go of control because I'm really bad at it. So why don't you start to try to explain how do you do that to be intimate with God? Okay. So why do we control? We mm. control because we're frightened something's mm. going to go wrong. We learn as a child that we have to control a behavior or we get punished. We learn that we have to control other people's behavior somehow so mm. they don't hurt us. We learn that we need uh, to study for a test so we will do well. And there's a control that goes on in our lives when we're learning. So we're making time for that. And so control has very positive outcomes on the surface. And we develop, going back to the mental patterns, we develop all these mental patterns that protect us through control, okay? So in my case, like, I had what's called a controlling or a governing personality. So most people in the, didn't, in the world didn't know I was a messed up schizophrenic gobbledygook inside because they met the part of me that controlled all the other parts of me. Okay. All right. But it's in everybody's life that we learn to control ourselves and control our circumstances to gain the result that we want. Now, Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, somebody who's broken will learn to control things so that bad things happen to them. That's the opposite kind of control. But All right, say that again learn. and explain it. Somebody who's broken and their belief system is that people will always hurt them, mm -hmm. they will only be interested, they won't know it necessarily in their okay. conscious mind, but in their unconscious mind, they will only be interested in people who will eventually hurt them. They are controlling their environment so that things that would bless them won't come in. And because that's what they're used after, to? That's what they're used to. Uh -huh. okay. And so when you want to develop intimacy with God, you have to hand over all the control to him. Lean not upon your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge me, he says, and I will direct your paths. And where does he want to bring you? To a pleasant land, to a good land, to a land full of milk and honey. He wants to bring you sweetness. His plans for you are good. He wants to prosper you. And so your ability or my ability to control our lives will not bring us all those blessings. But when we let go of the control to him and we trust him to work things out, it's surprising mm -hmm. what happens. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to sit still and wait and not do anything. Everything's crazy around you. Your husband's yelling at you. Your children are doing all sorts of gobbledy, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> and instead of going out and doing anything and trying to control the mess, you simply sit down. Yeah. And you wait and you pray and you rest. And all of a sudden, an idea comes into your head. Oh, I need to say that to my husband. You say that. And he goes, well, why didn't you say that the first time? That makes right. sense. Right. And you say, well, your children are running all over. You go, oh, that's what I need to do. And maybe you create a game to totally distract them, and they end up happy again. And once they're happy, later you sit down with them and you talk to them, and you can explain at that point that they created an awful mess and that you fixed it by distracting them, but what they did wasn't good. But at this point, they're open, they're happy, you've had a great time, and they can hear your words. There doesn't have to be any punishment. They hear your words because they're open. And so when we let mm. go of control and we let God control, he shows ways to do things that are very much better than we would think about. Mm. I, I, 
I keep getting this image in my mind as you're talking about that. Do you remember when we were little, that toy that you would stick your finger in and then you would pull really hard to try to like a Chinese game? Did you have oh, one of those? Yeah, I vaguely you, remember this. You stick your finger in and to try to get the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. Yes. But if you loosen up, your fingers will slip right out. But your your first intention is just to pull as hard as you can. And that is so what I'm picturing. That's is, exactly it. Yeah. When you you're you so you have to fight your humanness of trying to control and just that's trust. That's faith is what you're talking about. Yeah, it is faith. And 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 you know, some people hear from God, words come and they go, Oh, that's what God's telling me to do. Other people have never heard from God. Yeah. But they have a feeling in their heart. Oh, that gives me peace. If every time I think about that solution, I feel peaceful. Uh oh, well, oh, maybe that's the way to go. Or they have an image. You know, I've worked with so many people and they say, I never hear from God. I never see anything from God. God never talks to me. And I say to them, close your eyes and tell me, where is God right now? Or where is Jesus right now? He's nowhere. Okay. If you could imagine where he is right now, where is he? Oh, well, he's sitting in front of me and he has his hand out and he wants me to grab it. Well, why don't you try grabbing his hand? Oh, what's he doing now? Oh, he's picking me up. We're going for a walk. Oh, where are you going for a walk? Oh, we went to my mother's house on this walk. Oh, what's in your mother's house? And the whole issue will come out. Now, was that really Jesus walking with them? Was it their imagination? Or was it really Jesus walking with them? I don't know. But Jesus lives within us. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask. That's what I'm hearing you say. We have to ask, where yeah. are you? What are you yeah. doing now? And you have to take a risk. People are scared because the Bible talks about the dangers of vain imagination. What is vain imagination? Oh, I want a Mercedes Benz. Oh, Lord, won't you buy mm -hmm. me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. Won't you please make amends? That's vain imagination. Yeah. yeah. What is Jesus showing me right now? That's not vain imagination. It says in Genesis that when God created the world, he created it through his imagination. That's only going to be obvious if you read the Hebrew. I've never heard that before. So yetzer is to create, yatsar is to imagine. So yatsar wow is the root word for yetzer. So if you imagine, you have the capacity to create. And that's the word that's used. You can't cook a meal if you can't imagine what the flavors will taste like together. If mm. you're not imagining it, you might put chocolate cake and mushrooms and meatloaf <laughs> together. I wonder why it tastes so bad. Right. You use your imagination all the time in life. Wow. If you're going to start a radio station, you have to imagine it. You just don't go one day, oh, now I have a radio station. No, you have to do something. You have to right. imagine it and then plan and create it. That's Yetzer and Yatsar. So it's mm. the same thing. We can use our imaginations. Where is Jesus right now? And what do I need to give him? What is the issue I need to give him right now? And what does he want to make straight? And so you let go and you can see yourself handing him a specific kind of control. Wendy, I want to ask you, because I'm still trying to get over the handing over control. What if we have an emotional block or a spiritual block? How do we, how do we handle each of those? Maybe you want to take one at a time. It, it makes it harder. <laughs> yeah. If, if you are... Let's go back to husband and wife again. If you are controlling your husband because he has a certain behavior, when he does that behavior, it really upsets you. So you control things so that behavior doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you want to let go of the control. Mm. 
and you hand the issue to God and God stops you from controlling your husband that way. No. And that behavior comes back. He comes out and, and you sit there and you don't pick up control. You wait on the Lord and he shows you the core of the problem with yourself and with your husband and you see it and he shows you what to say. And all of a sudden your husband's behavior completely changes because you've told the truth and he's heard it because you're not being defensive and you're not being controlling and he can feel your love and then he can hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the whole situation changes, but it requires trust and like you said before try to trust and faith in god because it feels like you're putting yourself in harm's way so i see that you've kind of addressed the emotional let's talk about the spiritual now I mean, what if there are spiritual um blockages that are keeping me from being able to let go and be intimate with god it's the same thing hmm. lord what's the lie i believe Oh. Where did I let the enemy in because I believed a lie? Hmm. I'm scared the enemy's going to hurt me, but I want to let this lie go. I want to give it to you, and I want to be released from it. How can I do that safely? And you wait, and you hear an answer, or you feel an answer, or you... Ask him to show you an image mm. of what an answer would be. And then you do what he says. So what might be a spiritual block in your life that would cause you to hold control or somebody you know? So mm. what's a spiritual block that occurs to you? Um, being vulnerable. Um admitting that I don't put things before God, you know, that I, I like to say the words that I don't, but I don't know that I'm being truthful. There are things that I put sometimes before God by my actions. So and I don't right, realize that. Mm -hmm. So right now, if I was going to ask you either to see Jesus or to imagine you're seeing Jesus and what you just said to me, you said to him, what does he say to you? Hmm. You can be specific with him when you weren't with us. So you can, because, yeah. yeah. I feel like he's lovingly saying, I know. <laughs> you know. Ask him how he wants to help you with that. Mm. Yeah. And what does he say? I think more time, more priority. Give him more time, give him more mm. priority. Mm -hmm. Can you hand him right now one thing that draws your attention away from him? Visualize him mm. there and hand it to him right now. Already got it. <laughs> As you were saying the words, it already came. Yeah. And, and now, what does he? What does he say when you give it to him? Morning, first thing in the morning. Ah, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So did he? So the first he, fruits. The first, the fruits, first of time. fruits of the morning. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. I like to spend the morning, the first thing in the morning, and the last thing at night with him. Mm. And he mm. likes to wake me up in the middle of the night to go over things that happen during the day. Mm. And I have come to learn that even if I spend two or three hours with him in the night going over things, which sometimes I do, mm. because I can be very, very stubborn. Mm. And I can take a long time to work through things. And, and so sometimes it takes two or three hours. I have, I have learned that I'm not tired the next day, mm. that it's as if I had a full night's sleep because wow. I'm spending that time with him. I don't get out, I personally, I don't get out of bed. I don't go sit up in a chair. I'm just in bed resting 
dealing with the Lord, dealing with myself, mm -hmm. and he takes the things and he shows me their roots. It reminds me of when the Israelites were um, in the wilderness for 40 years and God said, your sandals never wore, your clothes never exactly, wore. You wake exactly. up fully refreshed. That's right. It's the same thing. Yeah. And you know, it's like yesterday was a very hard day and I was feeling really sick by the end of the day. And I even got scared that I, that I was like, Oh no, what do I have? And, um, a friend was like, that's nonsense. He died for your sins. Just, he died so you'd be well. Just give it to him. Mm. And I saw, I saw myself handing it all to him. And then I went out for a walk. And I walked for about an hour. And by the time I finished the walk, I had no symptoms anymore. I was healed. Wow. wow. Right. And so it's like, that's letting go of control. Hmm. I'm not going to believe the lie that there's something wrong with me. I'm hmm. going to believe the truth that there's something right with me. And hmm. I release all that stuff to God. But you had to take the problem to him first and, 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 and acknowledge it and ask for him. And I'm wondering, you know, I feel bad when I'm always taking my problems to him. Can we grow in intimacy with joy can we can we grow by just being little children and saying hey daddy guess what happened today you know <laughs> i mean yeah but wait, there... wait 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 there, there, it's not it's not an either or that doesn't work okay um so i remember the first time i met jesus was when i was six years of age and i may have told you this story but anyway it's it's another story that's in my book and and as a post-Holocaust child, my father had warned me to be very careful that I had to be more intelligent and more clever than the people around me because who knew when they might turn on me and want to kill me. Because that's what had happened to the Jewish people in Germany and Eastern Europe. It was their friends who had turned on them, right? So he had presented this to me. And so did I tell you this story already? Uh, go on because we certainly right. would want to hear it a second time if we okay. did. Okay, yeah. okay. And so, um, I believe that. And when I went to first grade the first day, I could just read my letters and little words. And there was this girl, very um, non Jewish, uh, Rosemary Broom. And she was reading chapter books like she was an 11 year old. And she was a nice girl. This, I mean, she was a really nice girl. But I looked at her and thought, she's going to kill me. This girl's going to kill me. And I walked home and I told my mom, Mom, this girl's going to kill me. My mom looked at me. She said, why? Because she reads better than I do. And my wow. mom looked at me like my mom hadn't been telling me this. My dad had. But he would never have realized what he was teaching me. Sure. Um, and so my mom looked at me and she was like, well, how, how did you put that together? Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, well, dad told me that I had to be more intelligent than anybody who's not Jewish because they might try to kill me. And, and she said, oh, honey, that's not true. And don't worry about it. And she just dismissed it. And, and I, I couldn't dismiss it. And I went well, to bed. Well, it doesn't go away. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. I went to bed that night and there was this man. I was just close my eyes. I wasn't asleep yet. There was this man all made of bronze about 15 feet high, sitting on a golden throne. He had, I mean, hands like this, feet like this. He was dressed like Moses. He looked like a shepherd with a staff, um, long curly white hair, long curly white beard, blue eyes that when you looked into them looked like the whole universe was in them. Uh, I was like, oh my. And he said, come up here. And I had enough sense to know he was in heaven, even though he only looked about five feet away. And I was like, well, how do I get there? He said, you just come. And so I did. And I went and sat on his lap, on his left leg. And he looked at me and he said, now I created everybody just the way I wanted them to be. And nobody is better than anybody else in my mind. I love each person just the way I made them to be. And when you compare and get jealous and get scared of somebody else, it means one of you's wrong. I made a mistake. 
So did I make a mistake with you or did I make a mistake with Rosemary Broom? How are you going to decide that? And I was like, that's not okay. And he said, no, I made everybody just the way I want them to be. And I love you and I love Rosemary Broom. Now you promise me that you will never compare yourself to anybody else again and never get jealous. So I promised. And he said, and I love you. And you can come every night and talk with me, which I did for years. And every time I'd go to talk to him, he would talk to me about love. And he would show me what I had done wrong. During the day, I would repent of it. And he would show me what I had done right, and that would please me, and he'd pour out love upon me. And after this happened, although I never remember him saying, my name is Jesus, or my name is Yeshua, ever after that, I believed in Jesus like I believe I'm sitting in a chair. And I went around telling everybody about Jesus. How did your and parents feel about that? They thought I had an imaginary playmate because they didn't believe in any of it. But because they thought it was an imaginary playmate, they didn't try to stop me. So that was a real blessing. So it's like, it's both. Intimacy with God means celebrating with him in our victories. It means celebrating who he is and the victory of who he is in our life. And it means going to him with even the littlest things that we think we did wrong. And you know when you did something wrong because you don't have peace. Right. Every time you do something, even if it's small, if it's wrong, you don't have peace. It's like I was at the DMV today and I had trouble with something and I was moving in a direction that just didn't give me peace. And so I went and did something else first, got that done, and then I had peace to do the other one. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, that's sin. But it was because if I had done them in reverse order, I wouldn't have been listening to God. And afterwards, I could see that it wouldn't have had as good a result. Hmm. So as I'm kind of recapping what you're saying in the show, intimacy with God comes through transparency. Oh, yeah. And um, confession, but also joy and thankfulness and gratefulness yeah and vulnerability you if you can't be intimate with your husband if you're not vulnerable you can't be intimate with a friend if you're not vulnerable right vulnerability with god means you totally trust him with whatever is going to happen and you don't hold on to anything so if you have an idea of what your life should look like. And you start to get a sense, I think God wants me to do something really different. Uh, maybe you've always been a teacher and you have a sense that the Lord wants you to quit being a teacher and go out and be a missionary and go work with the homeless or whatever it is. And maybe there's no money that comes from that and you don't know what you're going to do, but you have this sense, you keep having this feeling vulnerability means at that point god is this really from you mm -hmm. now what i like to do then is covered in the blood lord i cover this idea in your blood now if it sticks if the blood and the idea fit together then you know it's coming from god or god's encouraging it or it has something to do with god yeah. if you if you bring in the blood of yeshua and the idea starts to drift away. No, no, no. Then it's not from God. It's from somewhere else. And mm -hmm. so you, each person has their own ways. They should be scriptural ways to determine. You can put a fleece. But to choose to be vulnerable, to choose to listen, and then to choose to trust him as you step out in faith. Where's mm -hmm. the money going to come from? Where's the house going to come from? What am I going to do if I make this radical change? And then all of a sudden, people start to step forward with you, and you start to see that there's support, and people are coming alongside you, and you go, oh, I didn't have anything to be frightened about. Mm. Or maybe that doesn't happen, and you're out on a limb, but you still know 
God has called you to it, then vulnerability is to stay open and to keep trusting him and watch and see and wait. And you will find the fruit of what you're doing. And so this is, it is what builds intimacy is when one of the things that builds intimacy is when God gives us risks and we take them mm -hmm. that builds our trust in him. When God corrects us and we receive it and we let him change us, that builds intimacy. When God celebrates us, that builds intimacy. When we think about him as our father, mm -hmm. as our daddy, when we just love him and trust him with everything like a two-year-old would, a loving, doting father, that builds intimacy. Mm -hmm. Reading the word and substituting Israel for ourselves, putting our own name in mm -hmm. there. Wow. The Lord is my shepherd. I, Wendy, shall not want he leads me wendy beside still waters lord what does that mean i had a very hard day today how did you lead me beside the still waters and all of a sudden as i ask the question there are the still waters mm -hmm. and all the problems of the day disappear and now i'm resting in his peace wow anything you do to build intimacy with any other person you do with god mm -hmm. Same exact, same exact thing. Wendy, we're starting to kind of wrap up this show, but is there anything else that you want to share? I just want to um, pray with people. Mm. Um, I want to talk about, yes, I want to talk about how sweet our relationship can be with the Lord. It is his greatest desire to pour out love upon us, to fill us with his joy and satisfaction and happiness. It's mm. his greatest pleasure to meet us at our point of need and wrap his arms around us. And so Lord God, I am asking you mm. today to help everyone who is listening to be open to you like they'd be open to their best friend. Mm. They call it their bestie, their bestie, bestie. <laughs> to be open to their bestie, bestie. To trust you with everything they think, everything they feel, everything they desire, everything they do. To trust you when they fail you. To trust you when they know they've pleased you. They've know something has happened that's really good in your kingdom, to trust you when they feel like they're just being mediocre, to trust you when they don't know what to do next, and just to wait upon you, to thank you, mm. because thanks and praise, you inhabit the thanks and praise of your people, and when they thank you and praise you, you come. So to thank you and praise you, especially in the difficult times, but also in the joyous times, and to never take responsibility for themselves, like I did this, but mm -hmm. always hand the responsibility over to you and let you show them what you're doing. Yes. Because all those things together build intimacy. And Lord, I pray that each person listening will take time in the morning when they wake up and time in the night before they go to bed just to be with you and thank you and lay their lives open and bare before you and to see with their mind's eye what you want to correct, what you want to bless, what you want to give them and receive the blessing of how much you love them. I pray this in your holy name, Yeshua HaMashiach, over everyone listening. Amen. When I was six years old, my parents left me with a babysitter who practiced ritual abuse. It took me a lifetime to gain my sanity back. 
Wendy Cohen, a Messianic Jew and author of Freedom, True Freedom Lasts Forever, experience something that no one, especially a child, should ever experience. How does somebody recover from something like that? No matter what harm has come to you, you can be completely freed of all of its effects through your trust in Jesus Christ. How do we get to that place of freedom? When we surrender completely to His love and let Him take over, He removes all the effects of whatever darkness has influenced us. Wendy is available to share her wildly inspiring story and to speak and minister to your church, congregation, and gathering. Empowerment to destroy all the darkness in our lives today. Book Wendy to speak at your next event. Go to her website, wendy-cohen.com.